Hi and welcome to another episode of the Evolution Channel. This is our first show in our new studio. My name is Johan Landgren and this is Robert Hansson. We focus on electric transports, self-driving technology, smart energy solutions and of course artificial intelligence as well. Johan he's a, also a devoted and passionate uh, beekeeper so from time to time we will keep you updated on how it goes with his beekeeping so for those of you who are interested please stay tuned. Today we are diving into self-driving electric pods. We will take you back to our visit in Rivium Business Park in the Netherlands. Also we will be test riding the latest Easy Mile pod running here in Kista, Sweden. During the World Economic Forum in Davos recently, pod cars and minibuses were raised specifically as key elements and necessary transport solutions to connect what increasingly will become microcities. It was also recognized that these suburban areas has to have their own energy supply in order to work sustainably within the growing megacities. Many people think that self-driving vehicles is an invention by Tesla or Google, but this is actually nothing new. The technology has been around since the 1970s. In Morgantown, south of Pittsburgh in the United States, a so-called personal rapid transit system, or podcars, has been operating successfully since 1975. There are many different PRT systems, but they all have electric shared self-driving vehicles or pods. And until now, most have been using dedicated guideways like this one in Morgantown, enabling transportation from origin to destination non-stop without having to stop for other traffic. The PRT in Morgantown can handle up to 4,000 passengers per hour. Normally, 15,000 use these pods every school day. During the winter, steam is coming via vents under the track to keep it free from ice and snow. The PRT track connects three campus areas at the West Virginia University with five stations. Students can travel for free and the general public for a very cheap ticket price. And this PRT system has become a very appreciated mode of transport in this mountainous area. A total of 71 vehicles are currently used, carrying 20 persons per pod with a top speed of 30 miles or 50 kilometers per hour. Interestingly, this system was built by Boeing Rotorcraft Systems and has been operating with extreme levels of reliability, comparable only to the best subway systems in the world. When people think about PRT or Personal Rapid Transit, they may think about the PRT system at the Heathrow Airport in London. These futuristic little pods are already operating between Terminal 5 and a car park at the airport, and they have been running since 2011. Recently, Ultra Fairwood, a group of companies behind Ultra Rapid Transit, signed a joint agreement with Rico Auto Industries in Mumbai to build these pod cars in India. Ultra Fairwood aimed to build the world's biggest PRT system in the city of Ajan in United Arab Emirates. Yet this is only one of the more recent self-driving electric vehicle systems. Many PRT systems has been developed based on the technology in Morgantown in the United States. One of these systems is the one in the Rivian Business Park outside Rotterdam in the Netherlands. About a year ago, we visited Rivian Business Park outside Rotterdam, where these self-driving electric pods has been operating since 2006. The system operates without any onboard driver, but has a remote operator that can intervene in case anything happens along the track. At the stop, you simply press a button and a pod arrives within 3 minutes. The self-driving vehicles or minibuses in Rivian Park can take up to 24 passengers per trip or up to 500 passengers per hour per direction. The pods run on their own paths along a 1.8 km track with 5 stations. Today there are only 6 pods running in the Rivian Park. Traffic can cross on certain intersections, but the path is dedicated to the self-driving vehicles. Later this year, the Dutch company behind this PRT system, to get there, will replace and expand the PRT system and let the vehicles run on public roads. 
Moving on to a similar pod, the Easy Mile. Right now, the Easy Mile pod, Easy 10, is running in real traffic on public roads in the tech hub here in Kista, Sweden. During a six months test period, people can ride this pod for free. This is a very similar vehicle compared to the pods in Rivium in the Netherlands. The EZ10 is fully electric and basically self-driving, but since it has to navigate in mixed traffic and not on its own guideways, it has to have a human on board to assist in certain situations. Okay, so let's compare the different podcast systems and PRT systems, especially EZ10 and to get there. And Robert, you've been test riding these systems almost two days now. And what are your impressions uh, in terms of pros and cons? Do you think that podcasts and PRT systems is something for the future? Comparing to get there with the Easy Mile pod, the overall architecture of both pods are basically the same. The experience with riding the to get there pod is similar to riding a tram or a subway car. It feels more industrial solid manufactured. The Easy Mile is smaller and more nimble with a maximum capacity of 12 people. On the other hand, to get there is twice the size and can carry up to 24 people. The technology is here. This is not science fiction. The big challenge is to introduce the pods on public roads. Gradual improvements on many levels is needed when it comes to gaining public acceptance with more pods. With more vehicles on the road, the pods will improve thanks to deep learning software. Sometimes you need high capacity, while sometimes you need a smaller vehicle for smaller roads. So they complement each other. So how does podcars or PRT system compare to other modes of transport? Thanks to a great short by Douglas Malevicki, an entrepreneur in California, we can get an overview and compare different systems. Douglas Malevicki's short shows the hourly capacity of the most common transport systems and differences in average speed and cost per direction for every $100 million capital spent. What's astonishing is not only has PRT systems a much higher passenger capacity with a potential of more than 30,000 passengers per direction, but a much higher average speed than for example buses and trolleys. It is also clear that elevated bicycle lanes built like dedicated PRT guideways can handle several hundred thousand passengers per direction. The short clearly illustrates that PRT and elevated bike lanes should be a vital part of any sustainable transport system for the future. Today we have talked about how self-driving vehicles or pods can be used for public transportation of people. But pods can also be used for transporting goods. Specifically, we're going to look at the trucking industry where pods and electric vehicles is about to change everything. In the next episode, we will highlight a new hot startup, an electric self-driving truck that doesn't even have a cabin or a seat. Hope you liked our first show. Like or dislike. Comment below for suggestions on future topics don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.
Thank you.